the ground beneath our feet is never truly still. At any moment, immense forces are at work, shifting, building pressure, and occasionally unleashing that pressure in dramatic and destructive ways. These forces are responsible for some of the greatest devastation, yet also create fertile soil, clean energy, and breathtaking landscapes. In this video, we'll dive into the world of tectonic hazards, specifically earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. We'll explore how they form, why some places are more vulnerable than others, and how they impact both natural environments and human lives. Are you ready? Let's begin by understanding the science behind these incredible forces. From our previous video, we have established that different tectonic processes and landforms are observed at different plate boundaries. Each interaction at the convergent, divergent, and transform plate boundary creates unique landforms and hazards. However, one thing is constant. At each plate boundary, plate movements cause stress to build up. And when this stress is suddenly released, it shakes the earth in the form of earthquakes. So how exactly does an earthquake happen? Firstly, we need to recognize that edges of tectonic plates are not smooth. As such, plate movements will increase friction, which will result in immense amounts of stress to accumulate. When the stress exceeds the strength of the rocks, the plates will suddenly slip and release energy in the form of seismic waves. The seismic energy then travels from the earthquake's focus to the Earth's surface, causing violent earthquakes. It is important to note that the deeper the earthquake's focus, the less violent the ground shaking as most of the seismic energy is lost when the seismic waves make its way to the Earth's surface. Shallow focus earthquakes, on the other hand, causes greater damage as most of the seismic energy will still be intact by the time it reaches the Earth's surface. So are all earthquakes evenly distributed across all plate boundaries? When analyzing maps showing the distribution of earthquakes, a clear pattern emerges. Earthquakes are especially concentrated along convergent plate boundaries. A striking example is the Pacific Ring of Fire, an area around the Pacific Ocean that accounts for about 90% of the world's earthquakes. At transform plate boundaries, such as the San Andreas Fault in California, earthquakes are also common due to the lateral sliding of plates. Meanwhile, divergent plate boundaries, such as the boundary where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is located at, experience frequent but generally less intense earthquakes as plates pull apart and new crust forms. Exam tips! It is common to find structured questions about description of the distribution of tectonic phenomena, so remember to revise the various tectonic plate names to ensure that you can provide accurate descriptions. It is also important to note that the magnitude of an earthquake is often the key determining factor of the extent of shake and destruction. They are measured using seismometers. In essence, the greater the seismic energy released, the higher the magnitude and the more severe the extent of shake and destruction. When discussing about the impacts of earthquakes, here are some useful case studies. In 2010, Haiti experienced a 7.0 magnitude earthquake that killed more than 250,000 people. Its shallow focus and the lack of earthquake-resistant infrastructure made it especially deadly. In 2011, Christchurch, New Zealand, experienced a series of earthquakes that caused soil liquefaction, where saturated soils lost their strength and started to behave like a liquid. Buildings and vehicles sank into the ground, and critical infrastructure was badly damaged. In mountainous regions, loose and unconsolidated soil on the slopes can trigger landslides during earthquake events. This is observed in the 2008 Sichuan earthquake, where more than 60,000 landslides buried roads, destroyed ecosystems, and blocked rivers, causing flash floods and cutting off rescue operations. Lastly, though low in frequency of occurrence, tsunamis can be one of the most devastating impacts of earthquakes. Tsunamis can occur when high-magnitude offshore earthquakes strike. With the seawater suddenly displaced, it can set out a series of waves that travel in all directions. As the fast-moving waves travel towards land, the increase in friction with the seafloor in the shallower waters slows the wave speed and increases its height significantly. This gives rise to tall tsunami waves that can bring about severe flooding and destruction to the coastal areas. There are two important case studies that you should keep in mind when learning about tsunamis. First, the 2011 Tohoku earthquake that triggered a powerful tsunami with waves up to 40 meters high. The 9.0 magnitude undersea megathrust quake struck off the coast of Honshu, Japan on 11 March 2011. 
This disaster led to over 18,000 deaths, widespread destruction of homes and infrastructure, and a nuclear crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Next, the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake. This 9.1 magnitude earthquake struck off the west coast of Sumatra, Indonesia on 26 December 2004. This disaster caused a regional impact with deaths of over 230,000 people across 14 countries, with Indonesia, Sri Lanka, India, and Thailand among the hardest hit. Entire coastal communities were destroyed, and the region faced severe humanitarian, environmental, and economic impacts in one of the deadliest natural disasters in recorded history. Do note that scale of impact and frequency of occurrence are the two most common geographical concepts used to justify stands for Level's descriptor essay questions. Now, let's turn our attention to volcanoes. These dramatic landforms found at convergent and divergent plate boundaries act as vents for the Earth's internal heat and pressure. At convergent plate boundaries, when an oceanic plate subducts beneath another tectonic plate, high pressure forces water out of the subducting oceanic plate. This water lowers the melting point of the overlying mantle, causing part of the plate to melt to form magma. This magma is less dense than the surrounding rock and rises through the crust to the surface. When it erupts, a volcano is born. Volcanoes can also form at divergent boundaries, where magma rises to fill gaps between diverging plates, and at hot spots, where plumes of magma punch through the crust. But not all volcanoes are alike. The type of magma determines the appearance of volcanoes and the nature of their eruption. At convergent plate boundaries where subduction is evident, the melting of the subducted plate releases silica. Magma that is rich in silica is viscous, meaning it flows slowly and traps gases. As pressure builds, it leads to explosive eruptions. As the viscosity of lava is high, they typically cool and solidify on the upper slopes of the volcano, giving volcanoes a steep concave profile. This is evident in stratovolcanoes such as Mount Mayan in the Philippines and Mount Merapi in Indonesia. In contrast, magma with low silica content is more fluid, allowing gases to escape easily. This results in gentle, effusive eruptions that create broad shield volcanoes like Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Occasionally, even shield volcanoes can erupt violently under certain conditions, as seen in the 2010 Eijafjallajökull eruption in Iceland. To measure the explosiveness of a volcanic eruption, scientists use the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI. This scale ranges from 0 to 8 and considers the volume of material ejected, the height of the eruption plume, and the duration of the event. For instance, Kalawea in Hawaii produces frequent but gentle eruptions, typically rank around VEI 1 while the explosive Toba eruption in Sumatra, Indonesia, which occurred about 74,000 years ago, ranks VEI-8 and is believed to have impacted global climate patterns. When analyzing maps showing the distribution of volcanoes, a clear pattern emerges. They cluster along the margins of tectonic plates, similar to where earthquakes are concentrated. The Pacific Ring of Fire, for example, is a seismically active region encircling the Pacific Ocean. Convergent boundaries like those between the Philippine Plate and the Eurasian Plate are where we can find highly active stratovolcanoes. Divergent boundaries, especially mid-ocean ridges, also feature volcanic activity. However, not all volcanoes are confined to plate boundaries. Hotspot volcanoes, like those found in Hawaii or the Canary Islands, occur where plumes of magma rise directly from deep within the mantle, creating chains of islands as tectonic plates move over the stationary hotspot. The impacts of volcanic eruptions can also be divided into natural and human categories. Natural impacts include landscape changes, air and water pollution, and ecosystem disruption. For example, the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo released a huge ash cloud into the atmosphere, cooling global temperatures and damaging local forests and water bodies. Lahars, or volcanic mud flows, such as those from the 1985 Nevado del Ruiz eruption, drastically reshape valleys and floodplains. Human impacts from volcanoes can be equally devastating. Pyroclastic flows, like those in the 2010 Mount Merapi eruption, killed over 350 people. Lava flows from Kalawia's 2018 eruption destroyed more than 600 homes. Volcanic gases can poison air and water supplies, while ash can collapse roofs, halt air travel, and cause respiratory problems. Images from past events show schools and towns buried under ash, power lines snapped, and entire communities displaced. 
economic losses can be severe, especially when agriculture, tourism, or infrastructure is affected. Now, let's pause to think. Given all these dangers, why do people continue to live near volcanoes and in earthquake-prone areas? The answer lies in the benefits these environments offer. Volcanic soils are incredibly fertile, making them ideal for agriculture. In places like Bali, Indonesia, rice paddies flourish on the volcanic slopes. Volcanoes are also rich in minerals like gold, copper, and sulfur, providing economic opportunities. Geothermal energy, harnessed from volcanic heat, offers a clean and renewable energy source, supplying 66% of electricity in Iceland, for example. Finally, volcanoes attract tourists from around the world, contributing significantly to local economies. Hawaii's volcanic landscapes generate over $88 million annually from tourism. To sum up what we've learned, tectonic hazards are a double-edged sword. They bring destruction, but also creation. They test the resilience of communities, but also offer opportunities for growth and renewal. In our next video, we'll shift our focus to disaster risk management. We will examine how communities, governments, and international organizations can reduce risks, respond more effectively, and build back better after disasters strike. If you found this video insightful, feel free to visit thatgeographyteacher.com to access resources such as learning guides, suggested answers to past year papers, link to my customized AI learning tool, and exam strategies tailored to the Singapore syllabus. Additionally, do subscribe and turn on notifications for more geography deep dives of the various cluster content. Have fun learning and see you in the next video.